We're just rolling into Walker, Minnesota this week, and this is just a neat town. You can see Main Street, there's all kinds of little shops. You know, in the summertime, you come out here and it's busy, you know, as far as Walker's one of those communities that probably grows three times the population during the summer. We're out here in the fall and you know, there's just hardly anybody around. There's some people out fishing, but you know, Leech Lake is a phenomenal fishery. There's no bad time to fish Leech Lake. And we're just gonna go out and I'm actually just gonna fish alone. I love coming over here. Weather's getting cold, wind's blowing, water temperatures are dropping. And this is a place where so often you can just follow the wind and pitch jigs and catch some really nice fish. You know, these points and spots, you know, they're kind of big. And so a lot of times what I like to do, pull into a spot, is just look over the area with your electronics. If the fish are there, you're gonna mark them. And not only are you gonna mark walleyes, but you're also gonna mark bait fish. And so if you see clutter, where it looks like bait fish, that's always a good sign. And a lot of times too, I like to use the side imaging. And what you'll see is you'll see patches of sand and you'll see patches of weeds, it's just a little bit different texture. And so I like to just swoop through the area. You know, some of these areas, you know, might be a big flat or a point that might be several acres. And so you can just break down the water quicker. And these fish move so much with the wind. Since there's hardly any wind today, we're gonna fish where the wind was basically been pounding in here for a couple of days. And so we're gonna check this area out here and just see if we can find some activity. Oh yeah. Love it when those fish stretch that mono. Oh yeah. They fight so hard. There we go, come on. That's the neat thing about Leech Lake right now. So you can catch those big fish, but the lake is just full of eaters. Hit it hard, fought hard. Gotta love that. Uh, Leech Lake is 100,000, a little bit over 100,000 acres. And the nice thing about Leech is you've, you've got a, quite a very different fishery out there. So there's some deep water bays right here behind us in Locker Bay, and then also uh, some main lake structure that's real shallow. So you might fish, you know, might be fishing eight to 10 feet of water out there. And some shallower bays, real shallow with uh, weedy bays, like Steamboat and Headquarters Bay, where you can get in a little bit better pike fishing, a little bit better bass fishing, and some real good pan fish. It's tremendous crappies, tremendous bluegills and along with our walleyes and perch. There he is. Oh yeah. You know, that's the thing that I, I, I appreciate about Leech Lake is that there's a lot of places right now in Minnesota where you catch a lot of fish. If you're hungry for fish though, you're not gonna find anything. But Leech Lake, that's walleye dinner right there. Just lots of eaters, still opportunities to catch big fish, but you just come out here and catch a lot of fish. That's what I love about this. We're gonna eat that one. That's perfect. You know, what's interesting about these shallow flats and this shallow structure on Leech Lake is there's some areas where there might be rock reefs and rock points and stuff that we were casting to a harder bottom. But what's interesting about this in my mind is a lot of times it's really gradual, really subtle structure in that it might be four feet and then it might drop into seven feet and then it might slowly taper off into 13 feet. It's really gradual. And on this gradual structure, you know, you're gonna have these patches of these low-lying weeds patches of sand and it's all kind of mixed together. There might be a 10 yard stretch of cara, which is just a low lying weed and then there'll be some sand and then there'll be another patch of cara and then some more sand, just a patchwork, almost like a quilt, you know, where the bottom changes. A lot of times you can really pick that apart, especially if you're anchored or if you put a talon down, you can cast and be really precise with your cast where the front of the boat, for example, off a particular angle, you might not get bit, but if you change and cast 45 degrees off the back of the boat, that's where every fish comes. And just how that bottom lays out, these fish, a lot of times it really relate to either the weeds or the sand. And that's part of the pattern each day, is figuring out what those fish are doing. There he is. Come on up. Oh yeah, nice walleye. And if you're looking to keep fish, 
You can have four walleyes per person a day. Hey, I'm gonna throw that fish back. That's just a 20 inch fish, but four walleyes per person a day, one over 20 inches. So a pretty generous limit. But you can see, you know, you come out here, you catch plenty of fish to eat, a few big fish. It's good living on a jig. <laughs> What's there to complain about? One of the great things we have on Leech Lake that we really appreciate is our, we have an input group process on the lake. So every year we sample it and then we go back to this input group that we have and they provide um, what they're seeing on the lake and what they think the you know, management decisions for the lake. We look at the management plan and go through that together and then we revise that every five years. It really gives us a great chance to, uh, to uh, hear what people are seeing on the lake and, and let them know what we're seeing on the lake as well and manage the lake together. Taylor, and one thing about putting the talon down is you can really get dialed in. There's patches of sand and patches of this car weed on the bottom, and it seems like right now the fish are on the sand. And when you're talon down, I mean, you get to the point where one corner of the boat you'll be catching fish, bait cast over here, nothing. I mean, it's amazing how they relate to that. Oh yeah, <laughs> fish don't like to get peeled off that bottom. Oh yeah, <laughs> these fish are just smacking it. You know, just classic Leech Lake program, just six pound mono, just that fireball stand-up jig, that's what I like. That blue and chartreuse or pear, those are good colors on Leech Lake. And I'm just hooking that minnow right through the head. A lot of times, you know, we're using shiners or rainbows or red tails out here, but I was stating earlier, minnows have been hard to find this year, so they've been just using big fat heads and they've been working fine. Any time of the year can be a good time to fish Leech Lake. I mean, it's good from the opener all the way through the summer. And, you know, I'd been hearing some pretty good fishing reports through the summer, but, you know, there's just so many different places on Leech Lake to fish. You look at Leech Lake in overview, you know, Leech Lake is almost, you know, several lakes connected. There's so many different places where you can pitch jigs up into shallow water and catch fish. And that's what I love about Leech Lake in the fall. This was a better fish. Look at that. <laughs> that is a good one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, beautiful fish. Grab the net here. Oh, come up here. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, and this is just a situation where when I'm coming out to a place like Leech Lake, I'm looking on my phone on the weather app and just seeing what direction the wind's blowing. And so right now, you know, you can see there's hardly any wind out here. It's just kind of a foggy, cool fall day, but the wind's been blowing hard out of the east for a couple of days. We're just fishing those shorelines, those points where we're getting pounded by the wind. And I tell you what, there's a lot of fish in here. This is fun fishing. All right, get that fish in the water. There she goes. But yeah, you just see the leaves and there's weeds and debris floating around in here where that wind's been blowing along the shoreline. So kind of a deal where we're fishing yesterday's wind. But when we first came through here, 13 to 10 feet of water, we were just marking fish through here. And actually we popped a couple of them here. I actually put the talon down here and just walked around the boat and fan casting. But there's a lot of fish in here. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. You've waited all winter for this. We can't wait either. Every day, it is you against the fish. From the fish hawk and pro tiller to the bass hawk and raptor. 
Crestliner's entire fleet is designed to maximize your pleasure and performance on the water. Handcrafted, continuously welded seams combined with high-grade heavy-gauge aluminum lead the industry with unbeatable engineering, strength, and durability. Crestliner has been catching fish for over 70 years. Crestliner, forged with strength, defined by durability. From the makers of the legendary Salmo Hornet, meet the new Salmo Freediver 9. Capable of reaching depths over 25 feet, the Free Diver has set the new standard for deep diving walleye crankbaits. See that Free Diver, that fish just, just mugged that bait. Individually handcrafted, tank tested, and tuned by Salmo artisans, every Salmo lure produces perfect action every time. Catch more fish with the new Salmo Free Diver 9. You can't choose the weather, but you can choose to dress for it. Introducing Blackfish Performance Rain Gear. Utilizing patented Event technology, this advanced membrane allows body heat and vapors to escape while offering 100% waterproof protection. With an exceptional combination of waterproof and breathability ratings, Blackfish Rain Gear keeps you dry all day. Whether on the tournament trail or chasing weekend walleyes, choose Blackfish because you can't choose the weather. Back in mid to early 2000s, we had some pretty low walleye numbers on the lake due to some uh, cormorant issues we had and some other things. So what we did, we ended up stocking on the lake for a few years to bring that back. And in 2014, we stopped stocking we, and we've had some of the highest year classes of young year fish, the young walleyes in the lake that we've seen since. So we've definitely, we're in a recovered state in, on Leech Lake and things are looking really well. Special place here, a lot of water, a lot of different yeah. opportunities. There's so many spots out on this lake. Uh, we're looking pretty good on Leech Lake right now. The walleye population looks real good. We got a couple of different year classes coming up, and we got a good number of 18s and 19s, you know, those perfect pan sized fish. And then we got plenty of spawners in the lake as well. Good numbers of males and females in the mid to 20 range that are adult females and adult males. This is the first year of our new walleye regulation change. What we went to was uh, we removed the slot limit, realized we had plenty of spawners in the lake and thought we'd open some of them up for harvest. So we took off the 20 to 26 inch protected slot limit and allowed some harvest of those, a few of those bigger fish. That's fun fishing though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it sure know, is. There's six, seven, eight feet of water all day and, and you know, these fish don't leave. I mean, they're, they're here That's the right. whole time. And Part of the reason for the regulation change also was our perch numbers were the lowest we've seen. So we saw some really high numbers of predators in the lake and we're looking to give some relief to the, to the perch in the lake. And, so the, hopefully this regulation change will uh, kind of put the lake a little bit better in balance. And we've seen a slight rebound in the perch population the last year. The sampling that we did this year, we saw the numbers that were right in our objective ranges, right where we want the numbers to be. It would hurt to have a few more, but then uh, hopefully we'll see that in the coming years. Now you can use braided line, you can use monofilament. People have different preferences, but I like using monofilament for pitching jigs like this. The reason being is I believe that monofilament just, it floats enough where it just gets that jig to just slide and glide along the bottom. If you use braided line, it's a lot more sensitive, but that jig has a little bit more abruptness. And the other thing is when that fish grabs onto that jig with monofilament, there's just a little bit of stretchiness. When you feel the fish, the fish has got it. Sometimes. I think what happens sometimes with braid is that, yeah, you can feel the fish a lot better, but the fish can also feel you. And so when they grab the back end of that minnow, they don't choke up on it. And so there's a lot to like about monofilament for pitching jigs. Early spring, all the way into the fall, so often that's the program. Gonna be a dinner fish? Isn't that something? We're pinned down in the same spot. Catching what I would consider a big fish, and then the next cast, what I would consider a great dinner fish. <laughs> Best of both worlds right here. 
you know, it's really struck me about Leech Lake the last few years, just the, the number of different year classes that I'm seeing just with fishing, you know, where you're, you're catching small fish, which is a good omen for the future, but are also catching enough big fish where, you know, it's fun. <laughs> oh, these fish have shoulders. Oh, we're out. Oh yeah, look at that. Water just clear enough where you see down about five, six feet. I'm tired yet. Come on up here. Oh yeah. All right. Got a lot of fish on that jig today. It was red <laughs> when I started out the day, but that's just nice. I think a lot of people they look outside right now and they think, ah, I don't want to be out there, but I'll tell you what, it's some of the best fishing of the year. I mean, I love fall fishing, and if you dress, you know, wear the right clothes, be very comfortable out here, you'll notice that the parking lots have a lot fewer pickups. <laughs> you have to come out here at the time of your life. So that's why I'm here. Oh, good fish. <laughs> Some of these strikes are just cool. I don't ever get tired of this. Catching fish like this, pitching jigs, probably in about seven feet of water. Oh, come on. Oh yeah, look at that. That is a walleye there. Look at that, I can't even see that jig. Isn't that something? Oh, look at that. Oh, come here, come here, big girl. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at that. Oh, my. Look at the belly on this fish. Just a fat fall female. You know, these fish are starting to put eggs on, too. Look at that. Oh, come out here. They got big teeth. They get caught in the net. <laughs> That's Leech Lake Walleye right there. Wow. That is gorgeous. Look right in the roof of the mouth. That stand-up jig just kind of skips through some of that cara and some of that sand grass that's on the bottom. But that's a nice walleye for Leech Lake right there. All right, get that fish in the water. You know, I think at times people look outside the windows, you know, they're in their cabins, they look out, they see some crazy person out on the water in a boat and they, you know, they think there's something wrong with their head, you know, and I can tell you though, you get out on the water and you know, you just wear the proper attire, you know, you get out there, you're, you know, you can stay comfortable, but you can go out in some of the biggest community holes, some of the biggest community spots, uh, some of the most premier fisheries in the country and have the spots to yourself and have incredible fishing. That's why people are still out there. And so that's something I always encourage people to do is don't put the boat away Labor Day. <laughs> And there's a lot of great fishing ahead, you know, and get out there and stay out there till the end because it's worth it.